ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome the number one citizen of Edo State, His Excellency Governor God. We know that's a Paseki to our platform this evening. Your Excellency, how are, you, how are you? Very fine, Your Excellency. <laughs> I can see you smiling. I, I I'm sure you watched the the documentary. Trust me, that's 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 huge. That's huge, sir. That's huge. Thank You're you, welcome to you. our platform, sir. Thank you. I I forgot with the, uh, those images. Uh, they're quite a, quite a while now. I think during COVID we did uh, we walked through of the School of Nursing Sciences and then. Just last year, we did that for the School of Health Technology. But great, great! It's good to be remember to be reminded yes. of uh, how far we've gone. <laughs> okay, uh, Your Excellency, I want to appreciate you. After confirming your uh, the appointment for today, I have to quickly rush to scout for these materials. Trust me, next time we'll get the updated uh, uh, documentaries of what you've done for Edo people, sir. You promised us the last time that after the governorship election, you're going to make yourself available to speak to Edo people. Your Excellency, how is everything today? How are you day? <laughs> I mean, I'm good. I'm good. Honestly, I'm good. I can, as I told you, the um, thing about being a professional is that you, you have to be deliberate. You have to know where you're going um, and understand how you want to get there. I said that I will work till the election day and when i know mm. that a decision has been made about who will succeed me that's when i'll stop working and have the opportunity to now review what i've done and talk about what i've done and express to our people what has really happened this last eight years mm. i want to thank you very much very very much um you know between now and when i leave i'm available wow. to let Edo people know what really transpired in every area. There's, we have no no secret, nothing to hide. We're very, very open. In fact, um, my transition committee is putting together a data room where any information you want in the last eight years, you can find any contract, any cobble we have spent, the explanation wow. is there. Because it's not my money I spent is the people's money, and they are entitled to know how every cobble of Edo money has been spent. So we're not afraid, we're very we're open, we're transparent. We are not perfect. I mean, no human being is perfect, mistakes can be made, but at least you'll see why we did what we did, even if you don't agree with what we did. Mm, just let's see, that is a, a powerful one. And I can tell you, this, this first few minutes has really relaxed the uh, the tension of your supporters, your well wishers, people that really wish you well, people that appreciate your good work. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the number one citizen of Edo State. Now, see, now see finish as we speak, we have almost 1,900 people watching. Please, can we take it to 3,000 by you just clicking the share button? Please, I want you to click the share button please let's hit three thousand so that uh, all the national dailies the big big blocks in nigeria they can get notifications to watch our governor and please after this broadcast don't wait for me to download and cut the parts you like don't wait for me it's a collective work what you just do copy the link download it cut the part where you like for this interview Three, three minutes, four, four minutes, 11 minutes, 10 minutes, post it in different groups. If I see them, I go share them. Don't wait for me to do this. So we already have over 2,000 people watching. Please, let's get 500 instant shares, please. If you know you are a big fan of the governor, if you know you are with the CEO for where governor signed, in there your hand, and you not share this video, I will vest for you. Because now that... Uh, we have the tigers and the lions. We have the agberos. They are back to our streets. Uh, mm -hmm. We are we are already hearing information of harassment across different communities. In fact, I heard this morning that there is one uh, uh, Okagele that was uh, you know that was banned by His Excellency. As we speak, the Okageles are back. You know, even when we see Robert, 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 let me tell you, I have till November twelfth, and I will deal ruthlessly with any mm -hmm. of those outs I see on the streets. And I've told my magistrate courts. 
I've, I've latted my security system. Any citizen that is harassed by any thug or kiger or whatever they call themselves will meet with my wrath. I'm still governor wow. till November 12th. Oh, wow, beautiful. I love that. So, ladies and gentlemen, please share this broadcast. We are going to start hitting the questions. No, Your Excellency, you've told us that you're going to create time for this uh, for this uh, uh, engagement, and we we title this Governor Baseki's side of the story. You know, you you have been working. You you're not a media person, even though in the last eight years I've I've always tried to say, Your Excellency, we are showing your work, but you need to come out and tell the world about what others say. Cruz will say, Neikare say, and Mr. Governor say not be the same. Thank God you are here today. So my first question before we, we, we I really want us to discuss your your achievements in the education sector today. Because in all interviews, this this uh, sector means a lot to you. So maybe next time we'll take other sectors, Ministry of uh, uh, Bridges, Congo Lads. But today we will focus on education. But before we go education, make I ask you one political question before when they when they bother a lot of people. Trust me, your supporters, your your candidates, the party's candidate, Aso uh, uh, your supporters and supporters are not happy. You just can see in few minutes, how is our candidate doing and how are you doing after the after the the old Monday, the old drama? Talk to us. Well, sir. We, we are doing very well. I mean, first because we know that Aswe Godalo won that election. Mm. And we have proved it. And we've gone to INEC with a petition to show that he won and to show mm. that the fraud that was committed in the coalition process. I knew about that fraud. That was why I went to INEC that night. Yeah. Met them, you know, creating all sorts of fictitious uh, paperwork. I met quite a few people that shouldn't have been there that time. Anyway, that's a story for another day. But that's why Gulalo won. Um, he's in good spirits. Um, we were together today. We went to uh, Ewato for the wow. um, sword turning and um, groundbreaking ceremony for the J Suites University in Ewato, which is clearly going to be one of the best universities in Africa. And wow. from there, we went with him home to Ebohimi, just to go and relax and um, just uh, what, be with his people in, uh, in Ebohimi. So I just left him a few hours ago, and uh, he's fine and in, he's in good spirit. Um, because clearly, we knew he knew that he won the election, I mean, hands down. Just let's say thank you very much. Now, how do you feel? How do you feel um, hearing, reading newspapers, uh, listening to interviews, especially from your your, your friend, uh, the former governor Shomole, uh, the, the 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 impeached deputy governor? How do you feel when people people try to paint this story that you are the cause? You are the cause of a of a earthway. because they are, they are, we are telling them that we won. They said no, that they won. How do you how feel? Could they, how could they have won Oredo, for instance? <laughs> how well, you see, like I said, I I want to talk issues tonight. I don't want to talk about jokers. I mean, if you look at them over the last eight years, you just find out that these are not people you I should be engaging with. I mean, you know, um, because you know, not I'm not arrogant, but I'm just saying, look. There must be a basis for us to interact. If you have no integrity, yes. if you have no character, I mean, how do I even start engaging with you? I mean, that's the first thing. I mean, you know, where 80% to 90% of everything that comes out of your mouth is a lie. Where do I start engaging with you? Where you don't have the background, you don't have the basis, intellectual, moral, ethical basis to have to have conversations on issues. On, you know, so what's the basis? So at the end of the day, I think the thing is to ignore them and focus okay. on what issues are. Um, okay. And the issues is about our people. In the issues about development. It's issues about how to lift our people from the deprivation they are suffering today, from hunger. That those are the issues. Not talking about characters who didn't go to school, who just by some accident of you know, of placements found themselves in you know in positions which they are not really 
that they were not prepared for or they don't have the capacity for. So I don't want to talk about them or talk about the issue. Okay. They're a distraction to our development. Let's focus on what the real issues are. And what are the issues? You know, when we came in 2017, how about you were in this city, you were in this state. Yes. What was the reputation of Edo? I mean, every evening, what was the main business? Can you recall that young boys and girls in the evening, you, you know, all they had to do was sell out whatever, look for money in whatever ways, and head to Boba Hill to take the transport, where to? To Kano, and then from there oh. to the Sahara, to Libya, hoping to get into Europe for a better life, right? You recall, I mean, I tell you, I think it was in January 2017, when an official of the of International Office of, on Migration came to the office for a meeting with me and said that we have a crisis and that they had, we had over 30,000 boys and girls who have been identified as Edo citizens in Libya. And can you imagine how many would have died on their way there? You had stories of people who tell you that their son has just left home. He was going with his friend. They were traveling. They heard from him. After a point, they did not hear from him again. There were hundreds oh. of stories. You know? And, and, and for me, it was an issue of concern. It was almost becoming like slavery. People selling themselves into slavery. And I recall during my electioneering, my campaigning, it was one issue nobody wanted to talk about. That, you know, it was like, well, everybody should understand, you know, you know what is wrong with traveling, uh, you know, what is traveling, mean, being trafficked. You know, it was, you know, you had places they called it Nomayo. I mean, yeah. it had cultural. And for a leader, you know, who cares about his people, I just didn't think it was something, you know, acceptable. As in history, we have never been sold into slavery. Why is it now we should be selling ourselves because of poverty, because of maladministration of our state and our people? I said, no. And I, you know, I thank God for courage. I stood up and I said, how, what do we do? How do we resolve this problem? And it occurred to me that we should have a plan. The first part of that plan was to accept that Trafficking and irregular migration was a problem. Admit that we have a problem that will destroy us as a people if we didn't check it. Because this was a young, our own youth, a, your younger people who just didn't have any faith or hope in the system at home. They just felt that life, it, you know, it has to be, it's better outside of here. Therefore, oh. anywhere else but home. Oh. And I could see the danger to us as a group, as a tribe. And we saw something I knew we had to fight. The reason I'm going through all of this, I'm going to link it with the issue of education. <clears throat> Giving you this as the background. So by, you know, the, I think the first quarter of 2017, I then said, okay, IOM, Swiss government, how can you help us? And they said, the EU and some other countries were providing money for airlifts of some of these people home. At that point, as they didn't advise that I could set up my own anti-trafficking task force. Hmm. So we, I then said, okay, um, Attorney General, go and set up an Edo State anti-trafficking task force uh, so that we can deal with this issue. The moment I did that, there was reaction from the federal government. The director general of NAPTIP at that time came, furious, fuming, and said, why are you duplicating federal efforts? We already have one. Why are you doing one in your state? I said, well, first, I have the authority to. And secondly, if the federal efforts were working, why would I need to? Do you think I'm happy being, uh, as an Edo person, being stigmatized? You know, I mean, we were, we were, you know, we were the joke of the country. You were laughing at us. Oh, what is the capital of Italy, Edo State? Jokes like that. It wasn't, oh. funny. it wasn't funny. And so we set up the task force. We saw the negative reaction from government. And that's when I knew that, yes, there was more to this. But I think for me, it, 
it hit home when a young girl who was trafficked into Russia came back and said to me, they're very angry and she wanted justice. She knew oh. the people who perpetrated the trafficking and she wanted to go after that. And she had enough information about them in Benin. I called my chief security officer at that time and to work with them. And after a few weeks, the girl came to me crying, frustrated. I said, sir, we will never be able to get these people because before we get to them, they've gotten information, they've moved. Because the people who are working with me on this are part of the I said, okay, no problem. So this is deeper than we ever imagined. Ah, in fact, that was what led me to set up the task force. Having done that, let's fast forward. The task force started working. Monies came. They started a lifting uh, the stranded victims from Libya back home. Yes. And because we had made the arrangements and we had a task force, every time a an aircraft came in, or was you know, we had our own people in the team, the task force who who will be at the airport to receive them. Oh. And what then happened was, as we received these returnees, we, and over time, we received over 5,000 of them. As we received them, we then, every time we received them, we documented them. Oh. We got a lot of data. And that data, when once we analyzed the data, it helped us to now begin to understand the root causes of this challenge. For instance, if every time anybody came back, the task force will go in the aircraft, receive them back home warmly. Um, we resettled them, did health checks for them, gave them stipends for a period so that they can, you know, stabilize, I mean, get back their lives together. And then documented them understood who they are, where they come from, what, you know, their educational qualifications, all of that. So we had data on almost 6,000 returnees. Oh. What came out from that data? When we did the root cause analysis of trafficking and irregular migration, it pointed to one thing, the failure or collapse of our educational system. Wow. And so we then said, okay, what do we do? What is the plan to get out of this morass? First thing, we accepted that we have, we have this problem. Second, we now have done a root cause analysis. Third, we need how to deal with the issue of trafficking as a crime to go after those who are trafficking. And then lastly, the trafficking, human trafficking became, uh, became um, vibrant because of the failure of our systems. So then we singled out education as that area for um, intervention. And the more we looked at the you know, issues of education, we just we found out that it was just not, I mean, we were, we, there was this penchant to focus on tertiary education. Oh, hmm. universities, that's all you heard about, university. But what about the preparation? to get to university. Mm. You know, for a long time, you know, teachers were not being paid regularly. Um, you know, my predecessor in office, who unfortunately, he did go to school. I mean, and found an opportunity was humiliated teachers. I asked them, you know, I, I mean, just, just didn't even understand what the challenges were. Thought that education was about building of a red roof giving contracts to their friends at inflated prices to make money. But, wow. you know, we then sat back to say, okay, now that we know, how do we really fix the issue, the core issue in education? Which is that these children who go to school, do they learn? Are they learning? Wow. Oh. <laughs> yes, schooling does not equate to learning. Learning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The fact that you have a fancy block of three classrooms does not mean, and the child lives home every day and goes there and comes back, does not mean the child is learning. So we then have to focus on the issue of learning and that what's important 
it's not schooling, it's learning. Learning. Mm. And, how, and, and how do we do that? You know, when you think about it, if the teacher is not in class or in school, that child cannot learn because there will be nobody to teach the child. Right? So it meant, therefore, that the key area of focus had to be the teacher. Mm. Focus on the teacher first. And I thank God that we were able to get the cooperation of the teachers. You see, sometimes you hear how we stigmatize and denigrate people because well, for whatever reasons, for whatever sinister reasons, these same people that my predecessor humiliated online, these are the same people I approached, came up, asked them, we want to train you on new teaching methods and teaching styles. And the first thing I say, you know what? It is not compulsory. Oh. So those who want to volunteer, please let them come. And I will train them. We had the first set of 2,000 volunteers who we used as the pilot and train them in the new pedagogy, you know, how to let train, teach children to learn. Fortunately for us, because after we came into office, you know, I ran a series of workshops. Yes. And we were able to reach out to experts, people who knew who have done this before. And realized that a group had already developed a technology that will help organize teachers, train them, help them prepare their lesson notes, help them excite, motivate the children in class so that the children can be focused and learn. But it was expensive. It was like $40 per license. Oh. And we didn't have that kind of money. So I called them and negotiated. And I said, look, you guys have been doing this. You've done it in countries, other countries in Africa, done it in Kenya and so So how many licenses have you sold all these years? All these years. I uh, 40,000 licenses. I said, but if we have, I mean, it's, you know, a meaningful conversation, I'll buy up to 200,000 licenses. So why should I be paying for the dollars? Please, let's give me a good price. Anyway, we got a good deal. Trained the first set of 2,000 teachers. Wow. And the day I went for their graduation after two weeks of training in, in, uh, in New Era. New Era, I was there. I was you there. Were, yes. Sir. It was, you remember, it was electric. Yes. The, I've seen. If you saw the excitement in these people, I just say, are these the same teachers we're talking about? They were oh, screaming wait. and almost they, they were screaming so excited, almost pulling down the, the, yeah. the foundation of new era. And that was the turning point. Because recall, after they finished, we had restored the self-esteem, the pride hmm. in being a teacher. And many of them left there. Very proud, calling themselves digital teachers. Digital teacher, digital teacher. I sit on the, I sit on the <laughs> stuff. You know, and as a result, you know, it created peer, dis, uh, peer uh, discrimination. And you say, one will say, look, don't talk to me like that, or you are an analog teacher. So yeah. <laughs> No, this is song. No more analog, digital teacher, digital teacher, digital something, something. <laughs> you should have been one of them. Yeah. So what happened there was that it suddenly we now had to train, and today we've trained almost 15,000 of them. Wow. Yes, in all our schools. So what it did, first, it standardized our teaching methods. So the so same way a child in Oredo is being taught is the same way a child in Akokoedo is receiving lessons. Mm -hmm. 
also solved several other problems. First, the issue of teacher absenteeism. Teachers being absent from classrooms. Because we being a teacher, teacher means that you have a tablet, you have a device we give you. That's the device that helps you do your work. Oh. That device, with that device, when you go to work in the morning, you synchronize with the head teacher, the headmaster. And that's the time that, that would tell me that you are in school. If you uh, don't synchronize your device in the school location, I will know. Because that data comes back into the back end portal. Wow. Yes. So if oh. you reduce the issues of teachers being absent from their classrooms, while in class, that device helps you take attendance. So we know the child that has come to school and the child that has been absent. Wow. And if we find that the child has been absent for a while, it triggers off a you know, system to so the back office people know and the managers go and look for that child. That's yeah. probably a young girl, I mean, a very brilliant girl, I think one in school in Oza or somewhere, who was missing from school for a period. And then we went out to try and find out what had happened to this child. And then the parents were dodging. And then we realized that that child had been married out to some oh. man and raised the red flag. And I had to take it up with the governor of Katsina at that time to make sure that we got that child back to school. Oh. And, and that process, you know, of just being able to um, have the data to see what is going on with these children was quite powerful. The other advantage is that the lesson notes, what a teacher is supposed to teach that day to the child, is already preloaded. So the teacher doesn't have to sit down writing lesson notes. Just, the teacher has just been trained on pedagogy on how to deliver to that those two children in class, to keep them interested, to keep them excited, to keep them, make them want to be in school and therefore learn. And mm -hmm. it also helps us to score progressively the performance of each child. So I can tell you over a six year period how the children in their best system have progressed and have performed while in school. And you can see a lot of them are brilliant. Many of them are geniuses. And guess what? These are not children of the rich people. No. These are children of houseboys and house girl, house helps. These are children of women, you know, struggling to sell in the marketplace. Oh. This is our public school system. So it's not been cheap. It's not been expensive. We've, but we had to make sacrifices so to look for money to keep this system running. And what is the benefit? The benefit is that in another eight to 10 years, Edo clearly would have gone back to producing the best manpower in Africa. Oh. Because if a child can learn to read, write, improve their, their literary and numeracy skills to the rate of his or her peers anywhere else in the world, then it just tells you that in 10 years, I mean, of the five, four, 500,000 children today in my system, the top 100,000 will be amazing performers globally. They will be great engineers, they'll be great lawyers, they'll be great architects, great, you know. And the system also has put in a lot of curricular activities. They have school sports, inter-house sports for their physical well-being. They have excursions to go to sites. I mean, our schools, our public school system today equates with whatever you have anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. So back to you. So we had to do all of this to reset the foundation, the building blocks for our future. Because as we analyze data, we didn't realize that under the old system, the drop-off ratio between primary six and SS1 is 50%. Wow. 
That accounts for all the Agueros, all the Alaye boys and girls you see. Mm -hmm. And that's what was driving trafficking mm -hmm. and irregular migration. Today, from the number one in terms of irregular migration and human trafficking, Edo is not top 10 anymore. Wow. From number one? Yes. Go to the International Office of Migration and look at the data out there. You know, let me, one second, I want to appreciate you. Friends all over the world, we have over 4,200 people watching. Please, let's hit 5,000 people watching. Please. This is the number one citizen of Edo State and is here to tell us all he has done. We've been hearing of his good work. We've seen his good work, but it is key that we do this uh, live chat to hear his side of the story because lies have started flying, propaganda everywhere. We have over 4,000, as you can see on the screen, we have 4,224 people watching. Please, if we hit another 500 shares, trust me, we are going to hit over, over 5,000. And in the next 24 hours, this video should hit minimum of 200,000 people. If we get this information out, trust me, these bad guys that are coming to steal our, our, our common patrimony will not have the space to misinform our people. You know what I'm saying? I love the way you are. Yeah, continue. Yes. And we don't know you are, you, are, you are breaking it. Let me also add this up. You see, yes. the, the day, the day you, you, you were engaging with Naptip at uh, 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 at Esua. I was there. Yeah. I followed you. I was there. There was another event. There was another uh, place that I followed you around the Iriri area where some white men came. I was also there. So you can see. And let me also tell you, I am a victim. I lost my my younger brother to this Libya route. Eric Opaze is the Eric. My business name is Eric Duke. He's the Eric. I lost him. That was 2000, 2008. So we I'm are so victims so of this fight. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. So you, can, you can imagine how many poor people we lost. But <laughs> you have to understand the political consequences. Who were those involved? <laughs> Why was it big? It was very big business. <laughs> Haven't taken these steps and stopped all of this. Do you think they'll keep quiet? No. So mm -hmm. how the political fights you are seeing today can be traced to issues like this. Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because people who were running rackets, trafficking rackets, human trafficking rackets, were making a lot of money from it. You know, my cooperation with the Italian gendarmes, or, you know, Gary Mendes, and the EU, EU that helped us break the back of this big business didn't go down well with some political actors. Hmm. The fight back today, some of it is not disconnected from some of these policy measures we had to take. Hmm. So where are we today? We've fixed basic education. And we must, I will forever be grateful to Dr. Joan of Yahweh. Yahweh, wow. Hmm. You know, I couldn't have done this without her. Hmm. This is a, a Cornell trained PhD researcher in education who sat with me and made all the sacrifices this year. So, I mean, I'm an investment banker. What do I know about education? To help us rebuild the system, win the confidence of the teachers, and now help reset Edo. Because in every system, every system is set at the foundational education stage whether America, Great Britain, it is when the children are, you know, in their early formative years in school that what they need to do in life is taught to them. Hmm. How to behave, the sense of citizenship, civic obligations, 
you know, just not only numeracy and literacy, and literacy skills. You know, yes, numeracy, how to add your sums together. Literacy skills, how to, you know, spell, how to string words together. That when you hear some of these children in a public school system speak today, you know, you feel goose pimples. I mean, you've seen some of them in their performances in some yes, of our events. Yes, yes, yes. It's not a fluke. So, seven years after, what has happened? We finished with the foundational stage. We reset basic education. And one thing I must say quickly about resetting basic education. When I went to school, basic education or the educational system was six years of primary school, five years of secondary school, and maybe four, three to four years of tertiary education. But about 25 years ago, a generation ago, they changed that. They said, no, basic school now is six, three. That is nine years of basic school instead of six years. Three years of middle school and four years of, you know, tertiary education. That's sure. Okay. So th that was what they did on paper. But in practice, most of the secondary schools, were, which were supposed to have been dis disaggregated into junior and senior schools, never really happened. So the system was floating. So after primary six, you are supposed to go to JSS. Well, you're attending JSS in the same school with another school that has SSS. Oh. Confusion is that Subeb or Ubeb regulates basic education. It was not only until recently that they now set up another board nationally to regulate secondary education. You have another board regulating technical education. So putting all of this together has been so haphazard that no flow. And that is part of the challenge we've had to kind of deal with systematically in Edo State. So when well, you, the child goes into school at the age of six, what is government's responsibility for that child? The law says government has that should have that child for nine years until that child is 15 and you leave JSS1. That is supposed to be basic school. But that oh. was wow. So by the time you leave JSS3, even if you don't have the opportunity to continue your education in life, you have enough learning. You, oh. you, you know much, a lot more about life that you can continue with your life. So today you have people who say they have finished primary six, sometimes secondary school, and they cannot read or write. That was what we meant. But we have changed all of that in a door. And the, the, the unfortunate aspect of this is that, you know, we've drawn the line and, you know, in, in time. Unfortunately, you have a generation who are victims. Those people who, you know, who were victims of it before we came. Those are the lions and tigers today. True. Wow. Oh. Who did not receive proper education, they cannot really read, they can't write, they can't help themselves. And so they're just on the streets without skills or, you know, or, you know thing, employability skills. We have, that's the problem we've been trying to deal with. And here again, I'm very happy with what the work they've done in Ministry of Education to begin to emphasize adult education. From Edo Sabi Reed program. Edo Sabi Reed. Mm, the, yes. commission, the commissioner mentioned it the last time. True. So it's about education. It's just not education for fancy. It's education to live life properly and to its fullest. Get, see how government, the first nine years, can imbue you, ensure that you have you know, the basic knowledge 
basic skills, you have the right attitude to life. So what we've done mm. is after primary six, as you go into GSS one, what do we expect from you? We need to teach you life skills, the right work ethic, ethics, your right attitudes, your civic responsibilities. You have to have a vocation, hand work, whether you want to, oh. you know, as your workshop in schools, whether you're a baba, a tailor, carpenter, you know, an artist, whatever it is. So if you finish, by the time you're finishing SS, uh, GSS 3, then if you can continue, if you have the resources, the means, fine. If you don't, you can always find something to do in life. You'll not be wasted. You have an option from then on, if you can, to go into a technical school or to go into a secondary school and prepare yourself for university. But I've emphasized from day one that education cannot and should not just be about certificates. Mm. It should be about knowledge. Knowledge. And so as a state, as a government, that's the revolution we brought about. So I'm very wow. proud today to sit back and say, you know what? About half a million lives, half a million children, who will not be Agberos again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because they now know better. Oh. They, can, they can go online. They have a free Wi-Fi, they can browse. So if you say, oh, there's a job somewhere, they'll say, wait a minute, let me Google it. Wow. Mm -hmm. There are people, there are people with a background who can now train in all forms of skills and vocations. We're training them to have the right attitude to life. And that's why today I was one of the, I mean, I was very, very glad. I felt so fulfilled today when I went to Ewato. Okay, yes, let's see. That's the, that's that's the net, the the question I, I really want because you you dead seriously on the issue on the part of the basic education, uh, the human trafficking and what your administration has done. Now, you travel you you went to Ewatu today for the groundbreaking of uh, Jesuit uh, University uh, in Ewatu. Uh, in fact, when I called uh, someone very close to me, he said, Oh, God, not there around that is an election matter. Oh, God, they go and want to go do grand, uh, uh, groundbreaking for a, a, another university. Can you tell us about this university and the impact it will, it will make to the education hub and the, the education system? You know, thank you. I, I think the, at the apex of learning is the university system. And, you know, we've had universities in Nigeria. The first set of universities were uh, federal government owned. Then we then had state owned universities like Ekwama and Co. Then you then have, you now have a whole, you know, myriad of private universities. But what is the purpose? What's the sole goal of a university? First, it's provide teaching and research you know, such that you can have practical applications of knowledge and the appropriate understanding of society and the technicalities necessary for solving problems in different spheres of life. Can we say that the universities we have in Nigeria today are living up to this expectation? In the past, they used to. Mm. You find Nigerian lecturers from when I was in Ibadan, you found teachers, lecturers in Ibadan going on sabbatical to Oxford and other universities in England. And you had lecturers from those schools coming to Nigeria. Mm. Do we have that kind of standard today? No. And 
you know, in as much as we've tried, unfortunately, I can't put the blame on any one person, but I won't say the quality of our tertiary institutions have uh, in line with global standards like it used to be many years ago. So when you're looking at ranking of universities in Nigerian universities, for instance, you're not seeing any of, you know, top 200 or top 300. You're looking, you know what I mean? In the biggest country in Africa, with the largest population, and none of your university is top 100 in the world, or top uh, 500. Oh. I mean, so, so for us, so two things. So I'm saying, yes, I think in terms of our educational policies, the emphasis today should be more on setting the basic on um, foundational learning, strengthening the foundation, and then preparing our people for, you know, at the, at the apex, at, at, at the university level, they should be able to compare with what you have globally. You don't want a situation where today we are spending so much, we're spending in excess of $2 billion a year to send children abroad to obtain university degrees. If we invested a fraction of that into our university system, you know, we will be much better off. So today for me was an opportunity to attract, you know, and turn the sword on a school I believe is gonna be the, one of the best universities in Africa. Not because they have a tradition the Jesuit order have run educational institutions for five centuries. They know oh. how schools. They have some of the best schools all over the world. You know, you have loyal Jesuit universities in America, in Latin America, in, but in the whole of sub-Saharan Africa, there's none. So oh. this is the one to be established. The in first. Yes. So, the, so, so today for me, that was the climax, that all these children were training on their adult bests. Some of them are geniuses. Finally, they have a place to express themselves. They have a place to end up in. Mm. Show that the world that Africa, Nigeria, has as much talent as anywhere else in the world. So it was like, I saw today the end of the beginning I started. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lefty, I uh, want to thank you. Trust me, sir. We, we, I don't know how we're going to do this as we speak. We have almost 4,900 people watching. And in my comment session, some are commending. A lot are commending. In fact, I said they should be dropping their questions. Trust me, they are not interested in asking questions. They are just commending. And I know many will be crying out to say, God, oh, hey, they will say, let's don't move forward like this again. But uh, we are praying and... Uh, Unless the judiciary tell us say they are not different from the current uh, executive arm, we will get. You get one question when Percy Simica ask you. Hmm. He said, "What are make a read down?" He said, "He said, what is the benefit of your education reforms to our society and economy? What will be the benefit of all these things?" Well, you have the immediate benefits and the long-term benefits. Mm. In the immediate, the short term, you now have citizens who you we have a common basis to even communicate, can understand each other. Because part of the problems you are having today with some of these political leaders, people who just talk anyhow, is 
Because there was no basis. They didn't go to school properly. There was, there was no common ground to converse. So that's why there's such di divergence. So I don't even know what, sometimes when they're talking, I don't even know what the issues are. What are we quarreling about? What is the difference? <laughs> I don't understand it. <laughs> what is the problem? You know? <laughs> Okay, you know, because your understanding of what government and its politics and you know, is is not different. Somebody says, Oh, somebody is politically dead. How? Somebody hey. you can't win election without rigging. You are calling somebody who has won his election politically dead. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is the benefit, you know, the benefit of what we're doing today. That by the grace of God, we will not have such rancor in our society going forward. Because at least there's a common ground we can understand ourselves at the primary and at basic level. Second is the issue of is tackling the biggest problem we have today, creating jobs for ourselves. Mm. Just to do things for ourselves. You know, even before the coming of the, you know, the, the Western education, we did most things for ourselves, right? Every aspect of life, we looked for a way, how they had the knowledge, whether it was an area of medicine, you had your herbalists, whether it was an area of engineering, how were the moats built, how were those artifacts created, you know, whether it's an area of seafaring, how did people move from here to um, um, Republic of Venezuela today, how did, you know, transportation, you know, that even in our, those are in, in, in the part times past, we had a whole knowledge system, right? So today, we, because it was disrupted, today we are rebuilding that knowledge system. And you don't do it by one or two, it's on scale. The difference between what we have done um, in Edo in the last eight years and what has been done everywhere else in Africa is that we are doing it on scale. I'm not talking about a thousand, ten thousand people. I'm talking about half a million children oh. learning at the same rate. It's huge. Oh. It's transformational. That's why the World Bank, the Gates Foundation, all over everybody's all over us to try and understand how we've done this. It's different. And it's earth shaking. So you have to understand that that's part of the reasons why we are having this. You know uh, uh, this tussle. Clearly, when all the teachers and parents came out this last election, because they knew the benefit of what this government has done on this offering to the children, they are also sad. Does this mean that this is all? It's all over. Where well, you know you they want to impose on us people who didn't go to school. How can they appreciate the need for education? Today, you have seen growth of small businesses. In the markets, you see this Edu Sabi Rich Centers are now training people, entrepreneurs, market women on how to read, on how to keep their books, on how to do, you know, how to manage their businesses. But these are the same things we're teaching these children in GSS 1 to 3. So in the Ooh. short term, we are resetting a door for the future. Oh. We're, building, we're, building, we're, going to, we're building the smartest core of manpower on scale in Nigeria and Africa. Oh. Your Excellency, Your Excellency, I want to thank you today. We'll keep thanking you. See all this tech when thank you, so that will still owe you some more because your people are. <laughs> your people are they are throwing in the question seriously so by asking about ask a guy about gele gele i said no today we are not discussing gele gele we are not discussing lands we are not discussing roads we are discussing education and education one hour is not enough for we will what come you back. are we will come back. okay we'll we come back okay so what yeah. we are going to do is this how what we've done now like you said i've not yeah. answered your question in full what is the future so I've done education up to um, basic. I've done it, you know, I'm looking at how private people are now coming in because of what we're doing and encouraging them to set up world-class universities. But between that junior school and what are we doing with our technical schools? We have to have a session so I can tell you and show you what we're doing on the technical college. Um, you remember when we went to College of Agriculture at Guarachi, what was it about? I was actually going there. 
So I'm going to have a session to explain how all of what we're doing at the basic level today will feed into, how does that feed into our agri programs like ESOP, the oil palm program? How, how does it feed into um, our fishing programs where we want to be the, one of the largest suppliers of protein to Nigeria? Mm. Look at a school of nursing sciences. Why are we doing that? How does it fit into our whole medical and uh, medical strategy? The School of Health Technology, I told you, I mean, how does that help us establish one of the best healthcare systems in the country? How does all of that link with our financial system, I mean, the financing of healthcare? So whether it's healthcare, whether it's agriculture, whether it's technology, whether it's, you know, all aspects of life that we expect to be competitive in. How mm -hmm. does education reform feed into it into the future? So this is all the, these are all the building blocks to make Edo great again. And I promise you. Yes, I baby, my last question before you go. My last question before you go. Please, sir, I know your phone has been ringing. Trust me. We have 4,900 people watching. Just let's see. Uh, this is this one the day political small. Yes. How you feel where each time the opposition go out to campaign? They attack the, 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 your, the, the investment your have done in education, especially when they use this phrase, Edo uh, Edo best is Edo jaga jaga, Edo best is this one, no teachers like the, the other guys said the last time. He said one teacher teaching five three hundred. You know how do you feel when they attack this your investment in education? I feel sorry for them. Okay. Because they expose their ignorance you see somebody who didn't really go to school cannot appreciate you know what education is about and even when there are improvements in their educational system they say a do best yes okay what is the basis what is a do best how many of them really know they don't so it's, sometimes it's difficult to answer to address to people who do they even know or understand what they're talking about they have no data. They cannot even read or understand the data. So, so, so it's like a waste of time. The good thing is that you have parents, you have people who have seen the effect, the benefits. I to give you a story. I give you a story. I'm sure I told you to you before. When we just started the best, I think after two terms, a woman came to me. And she was anxious, tried and tried and tried to see me. And I finally said, okay, bring, us, bring her in. What exactly is the issue? And the woman came in. And the first thing she did was pray for me, pray, pray. This was, well, 20, I think 2018 or something. Pray, pray, pray. I said, madam, what is the problem? He said, I came to talk to you about this Edo best you have started. I said, what about? He said, I have two sons. One is six and one is ten. Since you started this, you do best. I have observed, you know, I observed something. They don't play again as much as they used to. He said, because the one who is six, who is primary, who just started the do best with, when he comes back from school, he's busy, he's doing his homework, he's reciting his, his um, alphabets, he's Counting from 100 to uh, 1 to 100, 100 back to 1. And he's all over the place. But the, he doesn't want to go and play ball with the brother again because he wants to do his own work. He said, and in the morning, he wakes up before anybody now. And if you don't give him his bath for, on time, you will, he will make life miserable. Meanwhile, the brother will not like to go to school. So he wants to get to, he wants to make sure that he gets to school early because under the new curriculum, the new pedagogy, they have what they call the character board and it gives scores and marks for those who come to school early. So he will terrorize everybody who, who if they don't give him his bath early and take him to school early. Meanwhile, the elder brother he said, but she said, what is even more bothersome is that after two terms, the six year old can now read but the 10 year old cannot can barely read. So what she has come to me for is how can she do it? Can she now ask this 
10 year old to now they, they bring the 10 year old back to primary one to start with the brother so he can know what the brother knows. You know, at that time I said to him, Madam, I, I will, you know, you don't have to because I started discussing with our consultants and our experts how to deal with the issue of those who have, have not captured. So, and they were working on what they called a program where a remediation program for those who, you know, had, you know, had, escaped, had passed the, the, the period or passed the class where, or were ahead of the class where we were, uh, where we had started the, the best from. And um, we finally got the, together and we have a program where it's more like a remediation program now for, for the schools. So, to answer your question, that he, that woman could see the difference in the lives of her children. For well, that politician who has stolen money and sent his own children abroad has no business with that system. So they can talk about, they can talk the way they like. They just behave the way they like, act the way they like, with impunity, with callousness. And you can see the way they handled the last Saturday's elections. They don't care. They don't know. They're wicked. And by the grace of God, we will stop them. We have actually stopped them. I can't hear you. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh, I want to thank you for your time. It's been a wonderful evening with you. Trust me, uh, over 4,800 posting watching you. Please, guys, don't go anywhere. We have we have achievement videos of uh, the, go the governor's achievement videos to play. You need to see what the governor has done uh, with, with your money. You need to see his... Is accountable. You can see the confidence in in our governor. You don't be like, will they please say, oh God, don't do like this. So we don't say, oh God, you see that energy is still there. So sir, I want to thank you, and uh, I will still try to reach out to Mr. Crusoe and uh, your people to get another date for another interview. But we will raise up more, maybe to like, uh, maybe we can start by eight to like one hour thirty minutes okay. because. Please, we need to raise it. If anytime you are free, we'll can do, be in the let's morning. Do, no, we'll, do, we'll do once a week so that I can files. <laughs> once a week, okay, beautiful. So we have done uh, for this for this week, for yes. this week. The next next week, yes. we'll, uh, uh, I'll, I'll communicate my people. So let us thank you very much. And then before you go, I want me to thank a people we we vote for now because the organic votes now and get them now the, the one with the bad no it will reach before they to use bad or they change. You know, um, all day, you know, since Sunday, you know, now I just, we like to when I don't buy handkerchief, they wipe away people's tears. Because, you know, people, it has been very emotional. You can see that people came out, you know, it's like hope was dashed. And I, I can't appreciate our people enough. You know, anybody who takes our people for granted, you, just, you do it at your own peril. And people know, everybody knows what happened. They can appreciate what we have done as a government. And you are right. I thank them. You know, and they are the ones that give me the confidence to talk the way I do. Mm. And the ones that the confidence to do the things I do. They threaten me. Oh, they'll do this. They'll arrest me. They'll do this. I just look at them and laugh. I say, oh, you? How? I have people behind me. And you saw it in the last election. Huh? It's not oh. about talking. It's about real action and evidence and facts. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know where I do people. Real I do people. We don't talk much. Huh? Oh. They say, who has said do I do ye re. We're deep people. So, but you know, we have recovered our states. Yes. And by the grace of God, it will never go back to where we're, we will never go back to where we're coming from. Thank you very yeah. much.
Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's let's let our governor go to do his work. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, let us clap for the number one citizen of our great state, uh, Governor Noegase of Paseki. If you enjoy this interview, if you love to hear the governor like this, because we need to encourage the governor. If they break and say, Governor, come meet, say, over 50,000 people don't watch the interview. This one, I wait to channel, not forgive her. So I wait to arise, not forgive her. I wait to AIT, not forgive her. She meet next time, we say, make it come. Even after he leave office, we we'll say, tell you, your excellency, because the, the person that bring come now, want to stay there for some months. You know, feel do anything. So even after the governor leave office, eh, we will see the break and call, make it come talk to him. So please let us get more views. What you need to do now, please let's take for Facebook and YouTube, let's take the shares to 1,000. You where they watch, so just click the share button, please. You know, say you like something, right? you know, they you know they support the thing. Just click the share button. I beg. You they share some news, you they share comedy. This one I'm waiting. This interview need to do your wall. You need to do your, your profile. For yeah, you go day the time you want to watch and you go your profile, you scroll to this very month, which is September. You scroll, you see. So share this video. Today, now education, I go to no talk about. Maybe the maybe next week we we'll talk about roads. Maybe your power we we'll can talk about maybe some of the questions they ask about uh, gele gele. Una questions full year, and I go ask out. So guys. Share this broadcast. I don't make it too long. Just like a God assures next week, he will give us like one hour, 30 minutes. If you notice when in there is the broadcast, the phones they ring, the phones they ring, messages they enter. So it be that number one citizen. So I want to appreciate everyone that have committed today. Share. If they're born or show more way, may do broadcast like this. Not be channel, so not be this thing. You know. May he tell you boys, may they do broadcast like this. If you get 500 people with the watcher. Not be to talk much. Just like what you're gonna talk now. Or someone that cannot win a free and fair election in his local government. Philip Shai cannot win a free and fair election in his local government. But back to back, obviously he don't they win the election 2016, 2020. Plus this one, free and fair. Free and fair. That the governor not there for guru guru. Kind of, where all beavers do direct voting, they were, because they know they have stolen, because they know they don't do, they don't commit crime, they don't do nothing. Why they say they say they, they run up and down? <laughs> we are going to be patient, <laughs> just like what the governor talk now. All those of Kagele, eh, when they misbehave now, the Tony Kabaka, the Shaba, they may boast where they go from park to park, eh, before governor come out, many of them eh, now will go prison. I don't think hear some matter today. We come to the plan. These are people for Abuja that they crazy. Is the police going to open? I want to want to begin to do nonsense. Eh? You see, they go open up. I want to begin to misbehave. So, guys, I really want to appreciate you for watching today. Please share this video. Drop your comment before you go. And if you not say you are happy for what you hear today, no wonder you see some here lekute. You don't get what you will talk about governor. They don't agree. They don't agree. They don't. They don't. They don't agree like Obaseki because that human traffic where governor stop he affects them. All this the destiny bagua. Now me go catch destiny. Mohia mm. mu a trap in the mess setting a destiny. If destiny carry anybody enter abroad again, the person not go back. Make destiny bagua wait for me. All of the way they do show. If I hear, please, I beg you where they watch me. So, if you hear say destiny, a bagua, as well, I put they hide under this showbiz, they do you my trafficking because I don't feel here of some, but I just want cash the like this right down there. The, the ones who refer to the pass anybody where you where you hear you get information, say they use music, carry the person call because they only carry the person call as for 1.5 million that block. The person will call, call, call here after the person base are there. They will call as illegal immigrants. So not get documents. They don't feel open account. They're going to borrow documents in the work. And finally, people like them, Destiny Bagua and the rest. I don't want to mention the rest. Need. If you not get that information, send me that information. Send that to me. Amigo, amigo, arrest them. When you see all these evil people, 
Don't blame the government. Don't push us out for their gari. As human trafficking stop, shetro stop. So all those men when you say that they that they are pussy, they misbehave. They only see girls when they think they do road work again when they give them money, and they know that our boss can I cast them. The Chris, you well, you well. When she on the she of channels interview governor, that I mean for the world two thousand seven hundred today almost four thousand. See Anna. So that only day one hour. Imagine say this broadcast reach two hours before hit over seven thousand. See Anna. See Anna. Four thousand eight hundred and eight hundred and seventy eight. And I never should say they're not even screenshot and said, see her. You see her. You see her. She be not blind. Now let us do what they run now. Don't worry, we'll bring us. We'll see go bring our car. So we go down low. Don't worry. So guys, Governor Basaki has done well. Or the state. Ain't one of what one of the turn on and get my mouth. How about go work? Hey, hey, the money will they give a bat. Yeah, how about they cry? The money won't finish. So your brain never tell you say I get company for this UK. Your brain never tell you say my business is wrong for Lagos. Your brain never tell you say my business is wrong for PD. You bring what is a guess okay coded way with me when I take day. We be like I wake up and talk anything when I like. Governor will come here, so me and governor will never get uh, this when I withdraw. The dad. When I come here, uh, me and not be obedient as they do. Was I stick close to the governor? Was I go you and never pursue me that type of way governor did? I don't want to talk in matters. I go you you on that matter and I have full broadcast I want to do for a matter. Full brokers. One of them, amigo. Era amigo. How about you? If you go go there, era amigo. How about you? Era amigo. I plan. You have a era amigo. Amigo different day. Most of the XC and the Rotona, our contribute way. Our contribute way. On the hand, me governor. On the hand, me governor. On the man. On the man. On the man. What kind of man? We are here. We are here. Guys, please share this video. Please share this broadcast. Ah, APC not go sleep today. Um, uh, Tigers Alliance. Uh, tell, me, tell me why the Tigers Alliance don't go really they misbehave. They don't go school. They don't even know the implication of what they do. They, are, they don't go to school. They've been victim of poor uh, 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 of education in the past. They don't go to school. Now, why did they misbehave in here? Really, not they win election. This one now, where they don't rewrite you, better people write results, and they go to talk about taking it politically dead. When everybody from the truth knows that they don't vote APC, the few votes when they get, they buy them 10,000, 50,000, 20,000, 30,000. That's not life. See, I don't be like ghost town. Everywhere track. Be like ghost town. Everywhere dry. People they fear. Many people. Wait. You see all these useless musicians now. Need support APC. Yeah, where they, if they say come abroad tomorrow, come play music. What are you feeling good here? Hey! Then they support people now who want to collect their lands. Who want to begin to preach to their mama for a market. Ava kope be ya. Waka be ya. Waka be! You know si be si ni go de hoge e bosto. Congratulations. Congratulations. Oswo. E wo pino lo mari. Le do congratulations. Te yi. Se di. Se de regulation. Eh? Se de regulation. Or se de kare arrest ipo kare go abuja. E de iti mi po break ipo head. Was it the coroner letter before? For say before election about five, they use their money to take back. See, see the video. We don't go dig the motor. Come away, they hide the motor. And tomorrow I post the video. See ya.
they buy five people. We don't go find the motor. See the motor. She really they deny. Not be able to see motor be this. See her. We they take buy five boys, all graduates. See her. Where they go hide the motor? We go. We go dig and come out. Not be that be this. Not be that motor be this. Eh? So, a destiny back where I come up, let's see. I believe I believe the destiny bell and more. A cow, sir. Eh? A motel, here, man, see again. See the boys' motor with it, with it, pieces, with it, with it, by see the same. See, give money, give motor to Igbo smokers. Eh? I made youth for youth. Five boys, I had belly. The last one, we we'll never know whether the sixth boy self. Maybe that one feel like back for hospital self. Then they go bury her. I'll play the full video tomorrow for them. I could be a lot of what Baba Bati, what Winnie, and Winnie, and Wobby. What if I had been a little though, a matter what, eh? It may ask you why. Jono Sagi has relocated now to Nigeria. All the way to K Foundation, the way I suck you up, the way I mean, why go? I don't turn you one day. Why, why, why don't talk? Why me go? It may be a suwa. Me and you why go? Me, me do better than you are. I wa. Not even me, me and me or talking about Bobby. It will be made, we made a video. Look what we're showing. We send me your before I fight for you. Send me your Facebook. Even I'm a video. I swear I will block you. Because I've been as well over here on my camera, a party now, a politician now, a manager, a man, 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 a Yes, it's a problem solver. Just like Governor Tokyo said, we will recover. Our, we have recovered our state, so we're not going to let them. You understand? Where now? You literally always the question. The real though, the way of going, you have you literally your target. Man, my years school, your target. So, guys. Tomorrow update continues. So if you know you love Obaseki, type Obaseki or type a matter in the comment section before we go. If you know you love Obaseki, you appreciate his good work. See the way this is not governor when no way to do. You know, pay the paper. See the way it is and more than one hour. What the can show me do it up by to lie? No, more than one hour, settle down, analyze things. So, type if you know you love Obaseki, you know he's a good man, you know he's a good governor, type Obaseki or type a Macron. Okay, so go call. So come talk to people with food for him. You go call. Tepan, a matter one of the universe. Are we here? Are we here? The men don't even want why I protest. Only me. 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 Eh? Hey, what the lad? They want to protest to me. Okay. More time. More time. You got me as a bee. Here, time we want to take me plan to go Nigeria. Go collect appointment. It is I get plan. Why not collect appointment when no person can do eight years for them? All of them, when they drop nonsense comments, they say, I can't take my time. You don't, don't go block wire. Because when you watch me, you know, I, I, I don't block for the past for the past uh, three days. 
don't pass 500. I can't even reduce my followers. I don't block more than 500 people. You, Oswagi following me. Oswagi following me. You talk and I block you. Even if I sleep, say I wake up, I can't read my comment. I see nonsense comment. I block you. Who get time to the condone and say, make can wake up. Come. You don't see your nonsense comment. I block you. I just block one else now. He said, I ain't not like Obaseki. Hey, I block her. Come me like Obaseki. You don't need to be here. Okay, what we'll do tomorrow? Let's continue tomorrow. Let's continue. Tomorrow. So, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for standing by the governor. Thanks for voting for Asway. Trust me, by the grace of God, our mandate will be recovered. Trust me. God will do it. God will do it. God will do it. So, guys, see you tomorrow. Updates back to back. Tomorrow, update plenty. I'm going to drop out with, 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 with. Boom. But also said they're not celebrate. Now let that evening they celebrate too. The next day the attackers are lying to enter the different park. They pursue drivers up and down. They're not celebrate. How are you going to win governorship election? Oh, now let that evening you celebrate. Or how they go select you because they don't win. They select them. They rig them. Eh? Imagine say that the people's choice as we eh, win. Almost all the countries for Europe for all the for all this the cast everywhere. For all the cast everywhere. Everywhere, generation for there everywhere, beneath for bubble now. Because they know that they're the mandates, they're not to celebrate. That's what they be. So